Hi, this is Donna from Clever Crafting. Um, I really appreciate the time you're taking to join me today and I certainly hope that you learned something. We are going to make this wonderful steampunky looking mixed media card, which is typically for boys in actual fact, although it could be for anyone. It's this background that we're going to spend a little bit of time on, that lovely shiny background. That's the main part of our technique today. So we're going to start that technique with some photo paper. Now this is just cheap photo paper that I buy an A4 size from a $2 shop and I cut it into four to give me A6 size, which is 14.8 by 10.5 centimeters. What you're going to need to do this is this is actually just a piece of scrap paper. We're going to be using this as a guide, a size guide. This is a piece of acetate. I actually get this. It's a thin acetate off the top of my sticky sheets, a straw, some water in a spray bottle and some distress oxides or you could just use distress inks or just dye inks but we'll be primarily using distress oxides except for the vintage photo which is a plain distress ink. So this is my scrap piece of paper that's cut at an A6 size that I'm just putting in the middle of my desk and I'm putting this acetate sheet over the top. As I said, this is not fancy acetate. It's from some packaging. You could use a piece of cellophane as long as it was flat and I'm just putting that over the top of that piece of paper because what I'm doing is I'm dabbing my ink directly onto the acetate. This is how we're going to make our background. So the piece of paper underneath is not getting any ink on it. I am just putting ink on the acetate, which is sitting over the top of the piece of paper. The piece of paper, once again, in the background is just for us to use as a guide for size. And I like to think that I've got a little bit of control when I'm working with inks and water, which, you know, I don't really. All right, so I've zoomed in a little bit here. You can see that I have used aged mahogany, um, some vintage photo and some mowed lawn I think that was and I've sprayed it with water now I am putting my photo paper on this the shiny side down so I put my shiny side into the ink and I'm going to just let it sit there you need to be patient and let it sit for two or three minutes you can see that's peeling up now so I've left it there long enough and there's our result and it looks really cool. I'm going to go through that process again to show you. So we've got our piece of paper down, our acetate over the top. The piece of paper is just scrap paper that we're using as a guide. This time I'm using, um, let me see, peacock feathers, twisted citron, and once again, the vintage photo in the distress ink. The other two are distress oxides. So and I am just dabbing it all over. There's no rhyme or reason to this. The only thing that I am doing is I am overlapping a little bit. So I tend to start with the lightest color and then move along to my darkest. Spraying some water on it, a good amount of water, you can see. This time though, I'm grabbing my straw and I'm going to blow it a little bit because in the last one there, you know, there was a few droplets. I didn't, you know, I wasn't overly excited about the way it looked. Well, it was lovely, but I wanted a smoother look and it's interesting how much just blowing it a little bit works. I've put the shiny side down. So that's the right side of the paper down into the ink. Let it sit for two or three minutes and I've peeled it off. Obviously, I've cut out that two to three minutes so you don't have to watch. So I'll just put that aside to dry and because I've got that ink left there, I'm going to just use some scrap paper and sop some of that up. Now the reason that I'm going to do that, I've added a little bit more water, is because this will be light enough for me to stamp on if I wanted to. Um, and the tones will be, you'll see that although it's much lighter, it's the same colouring of course, it's in our background. Now while I've got my piece of acetate out, it's nice and easy to clean. I've just dabbed some vintage photo on that and some water. And these are some cogs that I've cut out of um, white scrap card. And I'm just coloring them. I, I don't want them to be even. I don't need them to be even. And it just seemed a good time to do it. All right, so you can see that these are dry now. Um, I did dry them off a little bit with my heat gun. But you need to make sure these are totally, totally dry for this next process. You can see the chalkiness of the Distress Oxide ink on top. What I'm going to do is I've just got a baby wipe, a clean baby wipe, and I'm just going to wipe straight over the top. And the beautiful bright color has been absorbed by the photo paper. And I'm just taking that chalky off the top. If you like the chalky look, that's great. Just spray it with some hairspray and it won't come off. But honestly, what's underneath is amazing. So that's the first one that we did, which I just love the colors and that are great. This one, although of the two that I made today is my favorite. 
I love this process so much. I have made hundreds of these. I, anyway, so you'll be seeing a few things pop up on our Facebook group where I've been making stuff out of these in the next few weeks because I just had so much fun making them all. It was great. So that's an, another awesome background. So, all right, but while these are off drying, I'm actually going to use one that I have made previously. And I stuck this onto, of all things, a piece of um, cereal box. I think it's Nutrigrain. Just to give it a little bit of depth. I didn't want too much dimension, but I did want it to have some. So I'm using the stamp out of this month's stamp kit and it's got this classic car on it, which is great. Um, it's got a solid one and it's got one that's just the, the plan of it. So I'm using the plan. You can see that that's not a very good stamp, but it doesn't matter for a mixed media. Um, we want it to look a little bit grungy and in this particular case, um, it, we're not seeing the whole thing anyway. So I, I, mixed media is one of the things that I personally have struggled with quite a bit. I do have a friend, Carol, um, and another friend, Marion. They're talented with this, so they've been helping me. And one of the things that they've taught me is that it's just about layers, a little bit more and a little bit more. So we've started with our base layer. That's the background that we made, which is amazing. And so now we're adding a couple of other layers. So we're adding stamps onto it. So I'm using another stamp from that same stamp set, which is a whole pile of numbers. And you can see I'm not even putting it on there completely. It's just hints of it. Little Little bits and pieces around so I'll put that aside now this is some paper that comes in the paper pack from this month's kit and I've just cut a piece and I am just ruffling up the edges and now adding some vintage photo now in the packaging um, I there's labels in the packaging that you can use one that this one says happy father's day but I didn't want the bright white so I've used exactly the same process the vintage photo with some water on a block dumped it in to give me that grungy look so this is uh, a clock that I've cut out the die this is just putting it all together quickly now and we've got layers upon layers upon layers um, and I did once again harden that up with some cereal box I've cut out these are cogs that you saw me coloring a little bit earlier and all I'm doing is cutting pieces and putting them around and you can see with my father's day I've used a black cog that actually didn't cut out properly interestingly so it was fun being able to use that and a white cog that I've colored and um, you could see when I turned it over there that I've just layered them and I've put that on my strip of paper I've put on some black so that's another layer there I've added um, some dimension to that last little cog that's another layer there and all together it comes all together nicely on the inside all I've done because I have put it on a black card base is I've um, inked up the edges with some vintage photo cut some pieces um, stuck a little of the cogs off and cut the pieces off now in that stamp set there's a stamp that comes up and that says no matter your age you'll always be a classic but this is a father's day card not a birthday card so you can see that what I had done is masked it off the top line and what it says now is you'll always be a classic which is perfect so time to put uh, the final pieces together I am just popping um, our card front onto our card base no one would ever know that there's neutral grain in there and there's the insert going on the inside I like to turn it to the side it makes it easier for me to keep it all lined up and there we have it so and I think this is a great cut I'm really happy with it just quickly wanted to apologize for my voice I have been quite sick so that's why that is I want to thank you once again for joining us today I'd love you to subscribe it really helps my channel um, yeah, to below I'll have a link to our Facebook group. I'd love you to come over and visit us. Until then, stay safe and happy crafting.